And I think we'll go ahead and get started because I'm guessing at least one of these boxes represents an entire class. So others may jump in. We find that timing is weird because all the schools aren't on the same schedule. So real quick, welcome to Manufacturing Days 2020. Um, I'm Kate Lee. I'm the Executive Director of Education and Workforce at the South Bend Regional Chamber. Allison Herzig is also on here. She's moderating in the back end and doing Q&A and all those fun pieces and parts um, to make sure our technology doesn't do anything crazy. We did get cut off yesterday for our last session, which was, but it was actually not bad timing to get cut off. So it was, it was Technology is very interesting right now. So um, all attendees are muted, so we, but we still want to hear from you. So you, and you can use the Q&A function to ask questions or share comments. We have this in the webinar format so that we can record and use these without having any privacy issues. So this session is scheduled for 45 minutes, so be sure to get your questions in. We want to thank all of our sponsors for Manufacturing Days 2020. You can find the full list on the Manufacturing Days landing page which we hope you've already visited or will soon. This session is sponsored by South Bend Community School Corporation. They and our other sponsors recognize the important role manufacturing plays in our region and want to help ensure you learn about these businesses, the great career opportunities they offer, and the local education providers who can prepare you for entry-level success and help you continue learning and moving to the next level in your career. We have Juan Lopez, the Dean of Ivy Tech School of Advanced Manufacturing, Engineering, and Applied Science with us to serve as moderator for this panel. Welcome, Juan, and I'll turn it over to you. Well, thank you very much, Kate, Allison. Thank you for everybody that's working so hard on making these great panels. And I'd like to welcome my panel today. Like Kate was mentioning, we'll let you guys self, we'll let you folks self introduce and uh, and tell us a little bit about your name and uh, where you work right now, what you're doing. So we'll start in the order that I see you on my screen. I've got August, Nick, and Randy. So August. Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, so I'm the welding engineer at General Stamping and Metal Works. Um, I graduated college in May of 2019, so I'm relatively fresh on the scene, but uh, um, well, yeah, I, I suppose that's enough for now. Well, we're glad to have you here. Thank you very much. Nick. My name is Nick Borden. I work at Modern Air Company. We're based out of Niles, Michigan. We have 14 manufacturing facilities across about 1.5 million square feet of manufacturing space. We're in five states across the United States and two countries, including Juarez, Mexico. Uh, we are a steel, steel and aluminum fabricator. So we use advanced manufacturing technology to make parts for the automotive, defense, agriculture, power sports, heavy truck, and heavy trailer industries. Thank you very much, Nick. And we've got Randy and somebody else with us here from Ivy Tech. Uh, would you guys mind introducing yourselves? Yeah, uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, I am Randy Kuda from uh, Ivy Tech uh, College. Uh, I am uh, department chair for welding and HVAC as well. Um, I teach HVAC and right here behind me, I have uh, Philip uh, Barron. He is uh, one of our instructors for the weld department. In fact, we have welding going on right now. And so it might be a little noisy at times, but you want to introduce yourself there? Yeah, thank you, Randy. My name is Phil Barron. I am uh, currently working at what used to be the H2 commercial assembly plant. And uh, I am doing the welding instructing for Randy right now for one of his classes. And uh, been, in the, been in the welding industry for quite some time. Yeah, nice to meet everybody. Well, I appreciate having all of you here, especially to talk about materials joining in the sense that, uh, that welding is an extremely interesting science that is much more varied than people tend to, tend to think of or imagine. Nick, you've already told us a little bit about uh, all the different places that we might see some of your products. But August, uh, would you tell us, could you tell us a little bit about what it is you guys make, create, or the things that, that you guys work on that we might see out there in the world? Yeah, so we are a uh, metal fabrication company. Um, we start with sheet metal. We have laser cutters. Um, and then they, they, if some parts move on to a press break, which is a, a, full, a way of bending the, the metal. And then we also have stamping operations. Um, and then some parts move further to the welding um, uh, lab. 
and then we do our welding there. And the, the industries that we serve are commercial um, lawn care, um, solar and wind energy. And then we do some commercial defense, some, um, uh, there's, there's varying other industries that we serve, not, not quite at the scale of the, the lawn and um, solar and wind. But uh, so if you, if you see a large field with um, solar panels and, and we sort of manufacture some of the components that go into the array, uh, um, sort of the coupling uh, components. As we can see, you know, we're talking about one discipline, one field, but between some of what we heard from Nick, what we're hearing from August here, uh, there is nearly no limit to where different kinds of materials joining uh, are really an important part of an incredible variety of manufacturing processes. Uh, kind of to round out this, this perspective on the breadth, uh, Phil and Randy, um, you guys get students from all sorts of industries and from all sorts of backgrounds. Could you give us a, a, a little bit of an idea of the different sorts of industries and backgrounds and, and products that your students tend to work on as well? Uh, yeah, students that I've had come through the class right here, a lot of them are from the RV industry. Um, I've had some from uh, Steel Warehouse. Uh, we've had some from uh, oh, different, different other disciplines that are wanting to get into welding. Um, wide, wide varieties of uh, uh, all types of manufacturing. So yeah, welding is used. It's very, very prevalent, very widely used in many different industries. And I can add on to that what Phil just said. Also, we get a lot of students from automotive. When you're in automotive, uh, I mean, sky's the limit because you know, you're welding on your own body panels and frames and you're going to build car trailers and stuff. And, you know, and we do get a lot of people that are from the farm. You know, they're always welding on their equipment and, and et cetera, et cetera. So it's, it's all kinds of people we actually get through the weld department. So of all ages. And, and uh, Nick, as, as we've heard uh, August and Randy uh, give us a little bit of this background, is there anything else we missed in, in that list of just the sheer breadth of where you guys end up? Uh... <clears throat> uh, welding is a huge part of what we do. Um, as a contract manufacturer, we do not have design authority over our parts. Our customers, let's say, for example, Ford, uh, Ford is Modineer's number one customer um, in terms of, of size. Ford will spec out the part. And like August said, we will then take uh, raw material in the form of coils or in the form of flat blanks. And then we will start the fabrication process. Some people call stamping and fabrication um, as two separate fabrication or stamping is a type of fabrication. Um, but like August said, fab is in our world, laser brake press weld. Um, if Modneer makes, let's use general numbers, 1,000 different SKUs, 50 million parts a year, um, well over 75%, maybe 85% of those parts would get welded. So we do MIG welding, we do TIG welding, and we do uh, robotic welding. Um, welding is, um, personally, I think it's awesome. I mean, it, it's a, such a cool technology that is applied across every industry, right? Um, it's a great career path. Um, you, it, it touches so much in manufacturing from defense to RVs, to automotive, to ag, to construction, to power sports. You can apply your welding tech, you can apply your welding skills that you learn um, at, at an Ivy Tech across so many different types of industries. That's why I think it's a really good um, skill set. I would, you know, like accounting, right? Um, accounting is used in every industry. Well, welding is used in every industry across across manufacturing, which is why I think it's a really great career choice. Absolutely, and 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 this is this is a great introduction to the, as you say, every industry breadth of this career. You know, when you're making this choice, you're not limiting yourself to any industry, to any space, to any kind of production. You're rather preparing yourself for an entire world 
of possibilities and opportunities, and you're getting prepared to do something that's interesting and exciting. We also have three very different, or four, I'm sorry, very different uh, career paths and stages of your careers and experiences represented here. And I'd like to get a little bit of that, especially because we've got August just leaving college, all the way down to uh, our, our Phil and Randy's here, who have just a couple days more experience than that on the books. So I'd like to know, um, now that you're, you're in the thick of it, now that you're doing this kind of work every day, or you're educating them, or you're talking to people that are working in this, what do you know now that you wish you'd learned back in school, high school and or college? Uh, we'll start with August, we'll go on with uh, Nick, and then Phil and Randy. That's a good question. Um, so I think something that is, is missed it, in the education process, um, at least for me, it was, it was maybe a little bit more um, um, cooperative sort of um, working. Like, like there's a whole lot of um, uh, cross process working where I might need to work with different departments and um, sort of understand what, what they're doing as well. Um, and, and I don't think that's emphasized as much as it, as it should be. Because once you get out in the, in the workforce, there's a ton of that. I mean, you've got to, if you want to make a good part, you got to work with every facet of the company. Um, and so that's something that I'm, that I'm learning um, and, and implementing now. <clears throat> and you're here working on one of those aspects, which is communication. And we greatly appreciate it. Uh, being able to communicate and integrate with everybody else around you is an absolutely key facet of working. And you're absolutely right. I think that it's something that we need to increase greatly in education, which is working together in a way that that, that is more reflective of the way that things get done outside. Uh, Nick, what about yourself? Uh, what is it something you know now that you wish you'd learned back in high school or in college? I'm going to follow the same theme. Uh, the, the, the skills that you learn in welding would be considered hard skills, right? So you're lear learning a technique, you're learning a, a, a technical application. And so when we look to hire at Modneer, we, we try to hire what we call Swiss Army Knives. And that would be um, someone who has as many different tools in their toolbox uh, to apply to our business. In private America, um, as August said, there is, uh, there's a, a major opportunity for cross-functional interdepartmental co um, communication and collaboration. And so um, back in school, uh, you learn a lot of those hard skills, but the application of the hard skills in the workplace takes soft skills, communication skills, the ability to get along with people, the ability to build relationships, um, and you, you hear that adage, it's not what you know, it's who you know. There's some truth to that. Not who you know from a, from a networking perspective, but your ability to apply the hard skills you learn in the workforce will very much depend on your ability to communicate and work with others. So I would say continue to focus on the hard skill development to have as many tools in your toolbox, but be able to uh, be empathetic, be able to be humble enough to learn from people who have been doing it for many, many years. Uh, there's so much to learn within any uh, discipline, in this case, welding. And so your ability to, 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 to learn, absorb the information and get along with other people is going to be key to your success across any career. Absolutely. And I, I would add that the who you know um, the networking aspect can be interesting and important uh, as well. You're learning from these people, but these people who have taught you will also be people that are going to be willing to recommend you, talk to others about you, pull you in, and especially in difficult economic times. You know, I got to go into the job market right after 9-11, and uh, 250 applications later, it was only two places where I had people that I knew 
that I was able to really go in and have an actual serious conversation about a job because they're able to, to know those skills that they've taught you as well. So definitely, definitely do not undervalue the soft skills side of your preparation. Work on as many of those projects and things as you can and, and, and listen you know, to this voice of experience. Following on to that as well, um, Phil, so what is it that you wish you had known back in high school or college? Yeah, I started off my welding career uh, as much as many of these students here in tech school. And so as bouncing off of what Nick said, it's, uh, it's the hard skill of welding. But I've realized over the years that there's a lot of ancillary skills that actually run into that, things like machining. And uh, if I was just looking at the, the variety of welding, you know, welding is such a large field and there's so much to learn there. I would have, especially as a young man, would have taken you know all of the education that I could have possibly got my hands on, um, and it would have it would have served me because I've seen over the years in the different industries that I've been in the uh, the uh, different disciplines that actually touch on what I was doing uh, or would actually lead into something else. So you know if this doesn't work out over here, then you've already gotten the education here. You could bounce over into this. It just makes you. Uh, uh, much more of a multifaceted person, much more knowledgeable all around. And that links well with what August was telling us at the beginning, which is you need to be able to work with so many different aspects and facets of the company or companies where you work. Uh, like Nick was saying about the networking and learning from all these other people, uh, the more that you're bringing into that toolbox, the more valuable that you'll be and the more marketable that those skills will then be the better jobs that you'll have access to. Do we have Randy there to answer uh, to answer the same question? Well, I'm basically just like what Phil says, you know, uh, when I was going through school, I wish I would have took more of the welding courses because uh, different hobbies alone that I got into, you know, just having that extra training and stuff for the uh, hobbies that I actually still continue on doing. So, uh, yeah, I wish I would have taken more back in the high school time. So, of course, uh, technology has changed a lot. We have a lot more uh, advanced uh, equipment. And uh, so, nope. Well, thank you. Absolutely. So we, we can see that all these different experiences come back to some of these same points over and over again take advantage of all of these opportunities and really uh, set yourself up for success later on. Uh, following up on that a little bit, we've got a question here from Karen and uh, anybody here that would like to take that up or all of you, um, you've got different industries, different ways that you've experienced this, but right out of high school, can you start working in welding and be paid for the training? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take a shot at that. So, you know, at my near, we will absolutely hire you right out of high school. You can start work as a welder. Um, you know, you, you would be able to then participate in night classes um, at a community college or a technical program, uh, working with guys like uh, Randy and Phil. So my near will, will pay for that education. If your grades stay um, um, consistent and they're, you have good grades, a modnier will pay for your welding uh, education at a school like uh, Ivy Tech, and you can be paid um, in a good hourly rate um, at our company. We have about 100 welders today. Uh, we, if you were to say across our 1,000 employees and 650 direct laborers, who do we need the most of? It's welding. Well, I, mean, I need 30 right now. Can't find them. Absolutely. So welding is a is a high demand uh, job, and Modnier would be happy to put you on an education path uh, to help cover those costs um, while in, uh, working you into uh, our organization as an apprentice. We also saw August nodding vigorously there, and I know that Randy and Phil have had experience with students doing exactly that. August, was there something you wanted to add to that answer? Yeah, I was just going to say all throughout uh, my college career and even now, um, every single company that I've dealt with has been more than willing to pay for continuing education. Um, it really benefits 
you and the company to have a well-educated um, and, and a large amount of skills um, in their workforce. So um, yeah, cer certainly. <clears throat> Absolutely. And Randy and Phil, you've had students all over the place that have been uh, working and getting paid for their training, correct? Yes. Uh, we, we have a lot of students that come in here and uh, the training is paid for, the schooling's paid for. Uh, so I hope you can hear me. There's a lot of yeah, we, uh, we can hear you clear. going in the background now. So uh, you're clear. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Well, um, so the, this is great news, right? Not only are these jobs interesting, varied in a bunch of different industries all over the place, portable and in demand, you can get paid for that training as well. So this is an exciting opportunity that blends an incredible set of high skills. These are hard skills. These are high skills. These are craftsman style skills. Um, and yet these experiences are, are hard to come by. Like Nick was saying, we have a shortage of people that can demonstrate all of the skills necessary to really be as productive as we'd like. Um, and that being said, we'll start with August, Nick, and then finally Randy and Phil on the education side of this. We're in this position right now, but how is that going to change? How do you see jobs in this field changing in the future? These students that are listening are, are, are preparing right now, but the jobs that they're going to have in 5, 10, 20 years might be evolving in a direction that nobody is really thinking about or talking about as actively today. So August, you're getting started. How do you see this work changing over the next few years? How is this going to evolve? Yeah, so um, I, in the foreseeable future, I, I don't see any less need for people who understand welding and, and are skilled in welding. Um, I don't see that going away. Um, the technology certainly will improve, but the technical skills and the fundamentals, they're going to stay the same. And as long as you know that, you'll, you're going to be able to be successful um, in, in, in being open to tech, technological advances and, and stuff like that. But, but um, in the next five, 10 years, no, it, it's, I see it being very much the same. Um, a very good opportunity for people because there is a shortage. <clears throat> well, thank you, Nick. What about yourself? How do you see the work <clears throat> evolving over the next decade or two? So welding's not going away. Um, the thing that I would say that will marry to welding is automation. So to the, if you want to be on the forefront of, of welding as an industry or as a technical skill, um, being open to taking additional classes in automation. Um, and automation is a pretty general term, right? But it's, it is the, it's industry 4.0 types of, of, of initiatives that could be robots, right? Um, there are not many schools out there that have really strong welding programs. And I would, ass my assumption is the schools that do have great welding programs like Ivy Tech or Ferris State um, also offer um, opportunities for automation with welding. Um, the other thing that, at least for our company, that I know that we are, we are going uh, quickly towards is laser welding. And if you're not familiar with laser welding, Google it. Um, it's amazing what can, what can be accomplished with a laser welder. And that is an example of um, a, a um, historically, you know, uh, Welding's been around for a long time, right? But you're adding you're adding a completely different type of application when you start talking about robots and laser welding. So laser welding is the future. Um, it could take it could take the place of a lot of spot and mig welding at our organization. Um, and we are we're kind of geeking out about it um, at Mod Near, and and perhaps you would be interested in it, in it too. But welding is going to be around for a long time. High demand. It's our number one hire. Uh, number one uh, position to hire today, and it'll probably be that way for, for many years. 
Thank you. This stuff is exciting. Randy and Phil, as you're preparing the welders of tomorrow, how do you see this preparation evolve or change in light of what we're hearing as well? Well, I agree with Nick. Uh, welding's never going to go away. It, it never will. Uh, we are getting into the robotic world. Um, but Phil and I, we just discussed, you, you know, you still have to know what a good weld looks like. Uh, so just because we're in that robotic world, uh, you still need experienced welders to actually see what a good weld is and what a bad weld is. And they actually go back and repair them welds. So uh, welding is definitely not going away if you want to add something to that, Nick. I mean, uh, Nick's there. You're Phil. <laughs> yeah, um, the uh, advance in materials, just to, to, the, the uh, root question, uh, you have material advancements. And so those different materials are going to require different processes. So there's that additional learning curve. Um, and one thing I thought of too was uh, slightly related is the uh, fact that you have a lot of your older welders that are retiring and there's not a lot of people to come in and fill those positions. So these students that are taking these classes right now, they're on the golden edge of this because they could be the next generation of people replacing people who are retiring. They're losing people by attrition uh, from different companies and stuff. And so it's, it's really a prime time for them. It is a great time to get ready. And as, as, uh, as we're mentioning, it's these technologies and materials that are evolving. There are more things around us that are welded that, uh, than, than, than we see. There's a lot of uh, friction welding and a lot of other kinds of welding of materials we might not imagine. Some of the face masks that people use have some kind of uh, strange and interesting bonding processes that they use to hold them together. And this is all part of that same family. Now, um, we've got a great question here in the, in the panel. And again, I really love the, the diversity of experiences and backgrounds that we have here uh, because they're asking here, and we'll start with August and Nick and then uh, Phil and Randy, are there something that you see as a set of common interests or basic skills that most welding professionals would share, one? And is, two, is there a way to try out welding and see if it's something that you are you have an aptitude for or that you might be interested in pursuing. So where could people um, test drive their concept of welding? August. Yeah, so um, some common traits that I see are, are people who enjoy hands-on work, um, they enjoy building things, um, they, they have an eye for detail, um, and then a place that you could try out uh, welding. Uh, um, you know, you can go to the, your tech, your local technical school. Um, and and I, I guarantee you know somebody who has a welder. So if you asked around, um, someone would be willing to let you, you know, lay some beads on some metal. <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah. Absolutely. Nick. Yeah, I would agree. Um, Hands-on, uh, an interest in hands-on work, um, and I would say an interest in material science. I mean, at the end of the day, you're joining materials and understanding the science behind those materials. Welding steel or welding an HSLA or like a high strength Martin Siddick steel is a lot different than welding aluminum. Well, why is that? Um, so having an interest in material science, hands-on work, um, and, and someone used the term I think maybe one craftsmanship. Um, there's, there's a big difference between a good weld and a bad weld. And someone who understands has a high attention to detail. I wouldn't, I would, I wouldn't go so far as saying a perfectionist, um, but um, those hands-on material science interests um, and, and the belief that um, welding offers a, a, a long-term career um, that I would defer to the gentleman from Ivy Tech on areas of opportunity to try out that technology. Um, it's something that Modneer could absolutely consider is, is hosting an opportunity um, for high school students like yourselves to come in. We'll put you in a weld booth and a helmet and mm -hmm. let you try on some things. Um, but again, great career. Um, and then we encourage you to pursue it. Well, 
Um, yeah, uh, going off what August said and Nick, both of you guys mentioned detail, attention to detail. And uh, that's one thing that a really good welder has in, has in common. Um, is they have an eye for detail. They wanna do the job well, they wanna do it right. Um, you have to learn metallurgy if you're gonna do, uh, if you're gonna be a good welder. Uh, Nick mentioned there's different types of materials. So you have to know what kind of filler rod to put in there. Um, and uh, the question about how can you try it out? We really live in a golden time right now in that you can go out to Amazon and because uh, inverter welders have been created, they have driven the price down on these welders and you could get a very low cost welder, stick it in your garage and play around with it. And uh, I, I would venture to say that uh, that's probably where a lot of people started. They either had an AC buzz box or now you can get something a little nicer for the same money. And, uh, and if that's something that tweaks your interest, then you start uh, getting ideas about the education. You, wanna, you want that to blossom and develop and uh, you know, result in a, a very uh, rewarding career. And also as far as trying out welding, uh, I know there's times that I have students that comes into our facility here and uh, <clears throat> they're really not sure of what they want. And there's times that we'll fire up a virtual welder we have here. You know, it's pretty close to uh, what you're really seeing and what you're supposed to be doing. Uh, and that, that kind of interested people, you know. So uh, like Phil said, there is inexpensive uh, tooling out there. Uh, get out there and see if you like it. After that, you get in here and you get taught the right way and on your journey. And I would uh, also add that there are high schools in the area and there are centers in the area geared towards high school students that have yes. these labs and these spaces. So ask around, ask in your local educational centers, ask if they can connect you with somebody that might have a program or something like these. And I love, I love the hacker space. I love the, the maker uh, mentality, but I would also caution welding is one of these things to be approached with care. I don't want you guys burning your eyes out with, uh, with ultraviolet light because you haven't taken the care to see what's going on. So whatever you do, and this, this is applicable to anything, right? whatever you do, make sure that it's done safely with the right kind of supervision and the right kind of safety equipment. This is nothing that you do is something you should try uh, just for funsies without taking the right precautions, right? Um, and we did have another question that I think is very relevant here in the space. Um, how long does it take to be a journeyman welder? And is that something that comes with a college education? Or are these two separate things? Um, who might want to answer this question for, for us here on this panel? Uh, Bill. Yes, um, becoming a journeyman welder, usually there's a, uh, there's a pathway that you go through. You're going to do something like... Uh, you're going to uh, like Ivy Tech and you're getting accreditation. Um, usually you go from education to actually being out on the job and working, uh, sort of doing your internship. Um, as far as length of time, I think you may, be, uh, you may be looking at four years if it's a like an apprenticeship program and it's organized uh, and uh, everything is documented. It may be four years. Uh, I know like the United Auto Workers, uh, sometimes it's based upon time, and I think they go to like eight years practical experience uh, on the job actually welding. So it could either be time-based or education-based. And it's not something that necessarily comes with a degree in the field. We, we do have to recognize that these are two, they can be concurrent pathways almost in, in a lot of cases, but they are not exactly the same thing. And I really appreciate uh, a lot of this background. So we're, we're coming up uh, fast on, on our time here, but I do want to get to at least uh, one or two more uh, great questions. One of the things would be, we've already talked about how varied, how interesting, how broad, how deep the future of this work, but also on a very personal level. What is that best thing about what you do every day? that gets you excited to get up and go back to work today? You know, we'll start with August, Nick, and then Phil and, and, and Randy. You know, I, I really enjoy um, 
the problem solving aspect of what I do. Um, it, it requires a, you know, creative thinking and, and critical thinking, you know, looking at it from a broad perspective and then narrowing down uh, your view to kind of see where things are functioning correctly, where they're functioning incorrectly, where it, where it can improve. Um, and, I, and I really enjoyed that part. And then seeing at the end of all the work you put in, this is the improvement um, and it resulted in X, Y, or Z um, for the company. Thank you, Nick. I would say working in a team environment I mean, whether or not you are in a weld booth or you are managing a team of welders, um, having the ability to work cross-functionally um, in a manufacturing environment <clears throat> is very rewarding. Um, we've talked a little bit about how welding applies to uh, different industries and, and different applications, but it really is a, is a main cog in the wheel of manufacturing. So um, welding allows you to be a hub um, and you can touch so many different areas within manufacturing across uh, different industries. Um, and we get a lot of um, satisfaction out of, uh, out of having a career that, that is so um, interchangeable and applicable um, in, in a lot of different places. Thank you. And how about uh, you, Randy and, and Phil? Uh, what I enjoy is coming in here, especially the beginning of the semester, and we have all these new students coming in and hearing their uh, stories of why they're here and whatnot, and just watching the expression on these students' face or having the students come down to my office like, you see this weld that I laid or uh, that or when it's time, because we do AWS certifications here for three different processes, MIG, stick, and TIG, and uh, especially when they get into the aluminum TIG and then they come down to my office, they show how they actually uh, laid their weld and show me their penetration and all that. So it's, it's really exciting seeing the expression on these students' faces. And it's like, wow, I told you, you can do it. So. Well, like I said before, I started my career in welding at tech school uh, 37 years ago at a college in Alabama. And uh, I had two really good teachers and they instilled in me attention to detail and to be kind of a picky person when it came to doing things the right way. And uh, the question is what, what kind of gets you up out of bed in the morning and everything. For me, as far as uh, teaching these students, it, this is my opportunity to give back what I was given 37 years ago. And uh, it has earned me a pretty good living over the years, so. And to continue that chain of, of quality yes. and dedication to a great profession. Yep. And I really appreciate those perspectives. Um, I did want to clarify here that students in high schools that don't offer welding can explore opportunities to enroll as part-time students in their local district uh, career and technical education, their CTE programs. So like a private high school student in South Bend could attend a South Bend uh, School Corporation CTE program where they might have a weld booth. So that's why we were mentioning ask. You know, if you're interested, ask, because there are great opportunities out there for you to go. And as we, as we come up to these last few minutes, and as we're looking at all of these future great welders and these great employees that, that August and Nick need to bring in and build up into the next great professionals like we've got in Phil and Randy, is there something that you'd like to leave them with? Some, some exhortation as to a focus, a class, uh, a, a mindset that you'd like to see them take forward out of this event? We'll start with August, Nick, and then finish up with, uh, with Randy and Phil. Yeah, so um, I think an important thing that you can take from this is uh, there's a lot of opportunity. There's a lot of varied opportunity. You don't have to focus on one specific aspect of welding. You can learn welding, welding technology, and apply it in, in a lot of different uh, careers. Um, and I think even just the skills that you learn um, in, in learning welding and learning how to uh, do the technical parts of it apply pretty much anywhere else you want to, um, you want to take your career to. So um, yeah, it's, it's just a very good opportunity. Um, I started in, in high school, going to a local technical college as well. Um, 
and, and it's and it's been very beneficial to more than more than just my uh, my career. So, <clears throat> thank you, August Nick. So I would add on to that that welding is a is a career that you can move anywhere, really anywhere in the world, and get a job. It's like nursing, right? If you're a nurse, you can get a job anywhere in the world. So welding is applicable; um, is not limited to geography. Um, I would also say that this Michiana area between Elkhart, St. Joe, Barry, and Cass County, uh, we have a lot of welding in this area. It's a, it's a great manufacturing area of, of the Midwest. And so there's a lot of great jobs and a lot of great employers um, that, that gentlemen like, um, uh, like Randy and Phil train these employees that then we hope that you stay in the region uh, between those four counties, thousands and thousands of welding jobs. Um, so uh, uh, be, be, be aware of the great uh, welding market that you currently live in. Um, and then my, my last point would be, <clears throat> I read a book in high school that uh, probably has impacted me as, as, me, as much as, as most any I've ever read. And it was written, I think, probably close to 90 years ago. It's called How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. So um, I would encourage you to go to your library at your school, find Dale Carnegie's book that was written in the 1930s. Um, you'll laugh at how it's written because, again, it's 90 years old, but the, the application of the principles that you learn there speak to those soft skills. And if we were having a conversation of, uh, about any technical skill, developing the soft skills on how to win friends and influence people in the workplace is going to carry with you the rest of your life. So pick up a copy of that book. Be mindful of the great welding market that you currently live in and rest assured there's a huge future in the welding technologies. Um, one final point, if you decide that welding is what you want to do, but you don't want to spend your career in a weld booth, great. Every single thing that you see in your classroom or in your home or in my office, somebody sold it, right? So there's careers in welding and sales careers in welding and in, in, in marketing, companies like Lincoln Electric, companies like Trump, uh, big OEMs that, that design and manufacture laser equipment, all that stuff gets marketed, sold. There's program managers, there's project managers. There's a lot of different types of jobs within the category of welding itself. So if you decide that welding's for you, getting technically trained, and you can't have the fruits without the roots. Getting trained in the roots of welding and how to lay a good weld gives you the opportunity to springboard into all sorts of different business functions within that category. Thank you very much. And we've got our, our 30 seconds final thought here, Randy. Okay, no, and I agree with everybody saying uh, welding, you know, once you get that welding experience down, um, even if you get your AWS certifications and those classifications, I tell you what, you take that anywhere in the world. And just like what Nick was saying, uh, there's companies out there that will actually pay for that education. Uh, I would actually jump on that opportunity. Uh, boy, it, it's, it, it's a great opportunity to get into. Uh, and you don't even have to do it as your main job. I mean, you can do it as a little side job and maybe open your own little business of doing some kind of welding of some sort and uh there's a lot of opportunities there he, just even as a hobbyist uh so or even lots just, of opportunities so just uh, creating art so a broad field great work and great experiences here that were shared thank you very much sorry that we've gone over a minute here but thanks kate thanks allison for organizing and thanks to our wonderful panel Thanks, everybody. We sure appreciate you. Thanks, Juan. Thanks so much for moderating. And so I wanted to show and tell. So I went to a Northwest Indiana tr a trades event where you could explore things. And this is my first welding project from about, I don't know, a year and a half ago. And my grandpa was a welder. And I will tell you, I think girls in particular, high school females, be thinking about the fact that you too can be a welder. I was an art kid and I wish somebody would have said to me, you know what's an art? welding my beautiful phone stand but i'm like this is a great this is a great opportunity for everybody no matter you know 
It doesn't matter. Nothing matters. You can try welding if you have that kind of fire to do that. And it's a creative process. So thank you to all of you for sharing what you shared about welding and the different opportunities to get engaged with that. So again, thanks to everybody who participated, including our audience. Um, the South Bend Regional Chamber and the Niles Chamber both have Manufacturing Days landing pages. So if you want to get more information, see these panels that are, this panel is being recorded, share it with your friends, share it with your parents to talk about these kind of careers. Um, you can also check out other sessions, industry videos, pathway pages, and a lot more out there. So, so many businesses and amazing opportunities to explore in the South Bend region. And we appreciate you all being here today. So thank you. Have a great one. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.